world's first digital nomad village and we're gonna go inside and ask these people what they do to make money online that lets them work remotely from this island. Hi guys, can I interrupt you? Yeah. <laughs> sure. My name is Hans, nice to meet you. Hans, where are you from? I'm from Germany, Renat is from Brazil. <laughs> what do you do for work that lets you live on this island? We are running a yoga and meditation school called Soul of Yoga in Germany, Austria and Switzerland. We are having seminars on the weekends and also online courses, online mentorings, coachings and groups one-on-one. -on -one. So what I'm doing here is like organizing the business side and planning programs, doing the marketing side because that's like what consumes most of the work and also having online classes and online programs. You you have the classes also in person like they're most of them are in person there's also a colleague of mine who is actually living in Hamburg and driving around to different cities I just stayed here for six weeks now so I'm gonna go back next week to have a class in Munich then I have one in Vienna then it's another one in another city so do you keep your house in Germany no you have no no address no fixed address no as of now not and what were you doing before this I was doing the same job but in Germany before that I had been an engineer like slowly went down from a five-day week to a four-day week to a three day week and scaling up solopreneur thing. Then it just became like a full time thing. So you were able to replace your salary from engineering with doing yoga and meditation retreats? Depends on the fluctuations induced by Corona policies all over the world, but it's going so far. What would you say that, um, you know, on average, like you would need to make online to be able to live the kind of lifestyle that you have now? It really depends on the person. If you look at the lower side, you could probably find something for 350 um, to stay for a month in a shared apartment. Then you maybe spend like another 350 for food and then maybe another 400 for extra expenses. So 1000 on the very low side could work comfortably, 2K. And, uh... and what tip would you have for somebody who's an engineer right now and they maybe don't love their job, they want some more flexibility and they want to start a side hustle what advice would you give to yourself a few years ago I would advise them to invent a time machine and travel back in time and just don't study at all unless you want to become like a doctor and do like certain things where you need like an official certification I feel like it's a bit limited how we're spending time in universities I, I agree I think I went to university because I didn't know what else to do these days if you can earn an income online, you could go straight to working. Do you like to share what you do for work? Uh, yeah, sure. Awesome. What's your name? Federico Blake. Federico, where are you from? From Belgium. Oh, and how long have you been in Madeira? Three days. Wow. <laughs> where were you before? In Belgium. I worked in uh, Brussels and now I moved here to Madeira just this weekend. So did you just become nomadic now? Yeah, pretty much. Is this your first time being a digital nomad? Yes. How, how long have you uh, lived and worked in Brussels for, like your whole career? Ooh, I lived in Brussels on and off for about 10 years. I traveled a little bit in between. I worked in Brussels for three years now. How did you get permission to leave the country and come here? I work for a small company that's uh, quite flexible. I approached them indicating that I would like to start something new, move out of Belgium because I had that plan for quite a long time already. Yeah, we've been discussing for several months how I could organize my own work and so on. Their first reaction was uh, asking whether I would stay with the company. We found a good arrangement, so uh, I work remotely. And what kind of company is it? It's a research-based consultancy and I specifically work on tech deployment and circular economy and industry. What is a normal day in your life? Like, I know you've only been here three days but like, what are the kinds of things that you get to do outside of work? This is only my third working day outside, <laughs> so I'm still figuring it out. I just figured out that uh, where I live right now, it's 10 minutes from the beach, it's also 10 minutes up the mountains from hiking trails. What I would like to do right now is uh, go to the beach in the morning before working and then go to the co-working space and work from there. What do you think inspired you to have this lifestyle? Why not just stay in Brussels and like live a normal life? The urge to do something new, but more important, the urge to connect to someone new. I was here in the summer actually just on holidays. I also worked a few days from the co-working space by accident where I work from now. I found the people that I met really inspiring, very much a mix of people from different backgrounds, professionally but also culturally. It's very interesting to connect to them and try to speak the same language. Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of it is really about the people that you meet and that's why we're here at this lunch with like 20 remote workers from 
from all different countries, so that's super cool. And do you plan on staying in Madeira long term, or are you going to keep traveling? I plan to stay here for long term, definitely. Not sure yet uh, how long, but uh, we'll see that. And what tips would you give to somebody who wants to ask their boss or their employer to work remotely? Be precise, be specific about what your intentions are, how you feel about changing your environment, what you need, what you seek to, to develop yourself and your project. Position the added value of that towards yourself, but also towards your employer, very specifically, providing additional solutions or new markets, new opportunities, or indicating, hey, I need this for my own personal health, and I would like to keep working with you, would that be okay? It's funny because working for a company is always a relationship. You have to work on it uh, like you do on your relationship. Great advice. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, what is your name? Sam. Where are you from in the Netherlands? Um, Utrecht. Yeah. And what do you do to work remotely? Um, I'm a virtual assistant, online companies. Do you work for yourself or do you work for an assistant company? Um, I work for myself. I have a team with VAs. How did you get started in that? My boyfriend has his own company. I work for him just for fun. And then his clients came to me to ask if I can do that for him, for them. What were you doing before that? Um, I was in school. I was in yeah. nursing school. So do you think you'll ever be a nurse? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I am a nurse, but I'm not working as a nurse. So what are some important skills that people need to be a virtual assistant? I think you have to be very patient. And do you work with people from a certain industry? Coaches and e-commerce sellers. They're more marketing specialists. What is your lifestyle like here in Madeira? Yeah, in most times, weekdays, we work very much. In the weekends, we go do hikes or just go to Purple Friday, the party. And what advice do you have for someone who's maybe interested in working remotely as a VA and they just want to get started with their first client? What would you say? Don't overthink it, just go do it and then you will see it works out. And what was your name? Uh, Katerina. What do you do for work? And I do a lot of things, but most of my time is taken by a company that I'm working with as a technical recruiter. What were you doing before you went remote? I was working in Poland, a Portuguese market, as a data analyst and data entry. So it was a financial company. And did you have to work in an office there? In an office, corporate job. And then how did you transition from that corporate job to what you're doing now? That's a funny story so my now my husband uh, was also struggling with this nine to five always the same thing every day so we start discovering this digital nomads uh, or nomadism lifestyle and we start seeing a lot of YouTube videos and following people that they were doing yeah actually my husband's a big fan of yours oh, yeah. <laughs> we start watching your videos on YouTube and we start following this kind of people that were doing this for longer time than us and we learn with them and then we said okay I think we need to give it a try to this lifestyle so we did a lot of research before jumping you know into this leave our jobs and everything else behind my husband uh, he had actually to reskill and starting as a freelancer in, mar in digital marketing. Since then, we never stopped. What advice would you have for people looking for their first remote jobs? I would say we work remotely. Dot com uh, is one of the best platforms. Focus on Europe. You also have remoteeurope.com. Uh, to find 100% remote jobs. I would say those are my, my favorites. I also like flex jobs. We'll leave some links to job boards in the description. And then as Portuguese nomads, why did you decide to then come to Madeira? My husband started this project, this digital nomad village in Madeira. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, your Hi. husband is Gonzalo. I know him. Hi, Gonzalo. <laughs> well, thank you for starting the first digital nomad village in the world. That is so amazing. Can I give you a hug? Yeah. <laughs> I think that I'm part of the reason that you could go nomadic and now you're the reason that I'm here.
That's oh how God. the world so works. Yeah, yeah. So our life, that. people. This is how life works. How life should work yeah. when it's working, when it's flowing. So yeah. that's amazing. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you. <laughs> we have found another digital nomad here in the streets of the digital nomad village. Imagine that. And I am here with Daryl, who is from the UK. And Daryl, welcome. What brings you to this village? Uh, well, I came last week for the business mastermind, and then I'm staying for the Nomad Island Fest as well. How how long have you been a digital nomad? I am just starting that journey. Right. So I would say two weeks so far. How are you finding it? Love it. And what are you doing for work that allows you to just be existing here? I'm a leadership coach. I help leaders to listen empathically and communicate effectively. And that I can do online, which is great. So it gives me the freedom and the flexibility to move around. How long have you been doing that for? Nearly two decades now. but remotely and this digital nomad lifestyle for less than a month. Okay, and what kind of changes did you have to make to be remote? Not that many actually. Mm -hmm. Be able to pack things in one small suitcase and then travel around. Do you have any carry-on packing tips for us? Well, I'm a minimalist, so I don't know if that's going to work for you, but I can literally fit my life into one suitcase and one backpack. That is impressive. I have three bags with me. <laughs> what were some of the things that you had to give up back at home to be able to have this lifestyle? Well, I think the material aspect is really quite important because I think when you're stable, you have a base somewhere, you become very attached to things. So I think just not being attached to things really helps. And then there's a mindset around, okay, this is what I'm choosing to do now. Because obviously it's difficult from a friendship perspective. Everything is very transient. So you have to be relatively resilient and comfortable in your own skin to enjoy your own company. So mm -hmm. I think those are probably three things which are pretty important. Uh, the thing about being a nomad is that you can be alone a lot if you want to, but then you can also meet thousands of people Absolutely. if you want as well. And when you were living in the UK, did you still work for yourself or were you working for a company? No, I was working for a company. And now still for the same company? Working for a different company, but based in Estonia, but there's this transition out to building my own organization, my own company now. Thank all of you guys for watching. We will be back with another episode of how you became a digital nomad very soon. So subscribe to the channel for more.